Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about some environmental issues, and I want to talk about a trade-off that people often talk about, which I think is not fully truthful. People often talk about environmental issues in such a way that paints a picture of there being a trade-off between having a high standard of living and doing environmentally responsible things. And I don't think that this is a very truthful way of thinking about things. Like a lot of the rhetoric in the political dialogue in the U.S. seems to talk about protecting the environment as if it were a costly thing. So it's like, oh, it's easier to just keep going as is, and that we'll have a higher standard of living if we live in a less sustainable way, and that achieving sustainability is costly and detracts from our standard of living. I very much disagree with this approach, and I want to, in this video, throw out a bunch of ways in which uh, doing more sustainable things actually leads to you having a better standard of living, and so it's sort of like a win-win. So one of them is electricity use. Um, one of the things that I've done in my apartment, I have replaced all of my light bulbs with LED light bulbs, and this has hugely reduced my electric bill. Um, and it's really awesome. A lot of the people who live in the apartment complex here, uh, I've asked them what their electric bills are, and, and typically they're well over $50 a month. My bill here is typically under $20 a month, which is like less than half what other people are paying. And I'm also enjoying a high light quality. Uh, these LED bulbs produce really nice light that is much better in quality than fluorescence, and almost as good as incandescence, which are the big wasters of energy. They also generate less waste heat, so in the summer months, when I'm at n it's at night and I have the lamp on, it's not generating as much waste heat. So if I have the AC on, it saves double, and if I don't have the AC on, it helps keep the room cool. So either way, I'm benefiting from this. Another way that I want to talk about is gardening and growing your own food. So I'm going to go and switch gears, and we're going to look around the apartment complex for a second. Hi, so now we are in the courtyard of my apartment complex, and I'm going to show you some stuff that I think is pretty typical of apartment complexes in the U.S. So if you look around, you see that there is a ton of grass, there's a ton of space here. A lot of the space is not really being used for anything. So, in a sense, it's wasted. Like, there's all this solar radiation coming down, there's all the, wi uh, the rain that comes down whenever it rains. These are resources that you can use to grow things. I am walking over to uh, Building J, where I and another resident have approached the people who run this apartment complex, and they gave us permission to garden. And they set out a little bed, which didn't take much time for them, and here it is, we're approaching it, and we have planted a variety of different types of plants, including a lot of food plants. So I planted tomatoes and basil. So here we have, here's a giant basil plant. These are yellow tomatoes, yellow pear tomatoes. It's a variety that I've grown before. It's very productive. You see these are just two plants here. They're practically overflowing this flower bed. These tomatoes here are the early girl variety. I planted them because they tend to come pretty early. Here's a purple basil plant. Down in here we have parsley. You don't see it very well, but under these are strawberries. This is a plant honewort. So there's a ton of other food plants mixed in here. There's a sage plant. So I have a variety of herbs. Early in the season, before I planted the uh, tomatoes, I was harvesting strawberries, and they were pretty productive this year. Here's another strawberry plant down there. So once all this stuff dies back, the strawberries grow over the winter, and then you get a crop of strawberries uh, in the spring. Growing my own food here doesn't really take a lot of effort, and it's fun. And there's some really great benefits of it. So from my standpoint, it saves me a lot of money. Those plants cost a few dollars each. I spent less than $10 on all those plants. 
a lot of them are actually transplanted from other people. So like the strawberries were free, the honewort plants I took from seeds in the wild. So I didn't spend very much money on it. I don't have to put much effort into weeding that bed. And whenever I want tomatoes, whenever I want fresh herbs, I just walk right out the door. So it's a lot fresher than if I were to go to the supermarket and buy stuff. In addition, it's hugely reducing my environmental impact. Because here's the thing, commercial agriculture is really damaging on the environment in a lot of ways. For one, it's utilizing land a lot of times that would have been wild land. So like people are clearing a forest or something to, to build a farm. Whereas the space I was utilizing there was kind of unused, wasted space. So first of all, I'm reducing the environmental impact that way. Also though, there's a lot of environmental impact associated with the packing and shipping of things to the supermarket. So when you buy like a box of berries or something, you have the container that it came in, so it's generating plastic waste. Some of that doesn't get recycled, but even if it does get recycled, recycling is still a process that requires energy and resources. There are also a lot of resources used to ship those things around. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm enjoying a higher quality of life and saving money while also protecting the environment. I want to talk about another thing, which is uh, cars. But I want to go outside and show you some cars. So we're out in the parking lot now. This is my car. It's a Honda Civic Hybrid. I really love this car and it was kind of sad that it was discontinued. Right next to it is a normal Honda Civic. Uh, both of these are really fuel efficient cars. The regular Honda Civic is one of the most fuel efficient non-hybrid cars on the market, so I highly recommend these. Uh, if you look around this uh, apartment complex, you see a number of these bigger, heavier cars. Now sometimes it makes sense, like here, this is a pickup truck. This is owned by the maintenance man who works here. He needs a pickup truck, so that makes sense. Uh, some of these cars though, I know some of these people, they're these bigger cars. A lot of times I see people driving them and they're just one person in a big car. Like if you have one person in a minivan, one person in an SUV, it's pretty inefficient. So these people are wasting resources. They're, they're not really getting much of a benefit out of it. Also, some of these heavier cars, oh, here's another fuel efficient car, Toyota, Cor uh, Toyota Corolla. It's uh, similar to the Honda Civic. I really like that car. Some of these heavier cars though, they're more expensive and you get less fuel efficiency. So it just, it doesn't really make much sense to me. Back over at my car, I want to show you some cosmetic damage on my car. So right here, that's a scrape. I got in a little minor accident a while back. On this side, there's a dent. Now this dent doesn't look that, like that, that much. This actually happened when my car was parked. One of my friend's dads, he hit this car. And he offered, he said, oh, I'll pay for you to fix it. And I, I took it to the shop and the, the best quote I could get was several hundred dollars. And I'm thinking, this is purely aesthetic, purely cosmetic damage. Why would I want to spend money to fix that? That money is resources that I could be putting towards some, something else. And so I told him, I said, just take the equivalent amount of money you think it would cost and donate it to some charity. I'd, I think that would be a better choice than me wasting it on this thing that I don't need. So we're back in. I'm going to talk a little bit more about cars though. So uh, obviously what car you choose to buy and whether or not you choose to fix little cosmetic issues with it like that dent I showed you, those things affect your environmental impact. But I think there's some bigger issues with cars and that is where you choose to live. I see a lot of people in America that choose to live in very car oriented areas. So they live in these newer housing subdivisions where you can't walk anywhere other than maybe up and down the street and to a small park or something. But you can't walk to any commercial areas. You basically can't find anything to do within walking distance. And I find that that really decreases my quality of life, but it also increases your negative environmental impact. So I've chosen to live in a walkable community. I can walk to all sorts of things, uh, stores, restaurants, and so on. And that has made me a lot happier and healthier. Like I move around a lot. 
without having to set aside time for it. So it's not like I have to take time out of my week to go to the gym to get exercise. It's more like, oh, you want to go out to eat? Let's meet up on Main Street. And it's about a mile walk to Main Street. I walk up there, I maybe walk around when I'm there. Next thing you know, I've walked five miles without even thinking about it. And that's like a typical day for me here. So I see this huge improvement in quality of life that has come with living in a walkable area. And it also has greatly reduced my use of a car, which is reducing my environmental impact. And it's also saving me a ton of money, because I tend to drive my car less than 5,000 miles a year now. And what that means is that I'm putting less wear and tear on it, so I don't have to get it fixed as much. Uh, I'm not spending as much in repairs, things like that. So these are just a few examples. I could probably make tons and tons more videos about this. Uh, if you brainstorm, you can find tons of ways that you can both reduce your environmental impact and improve your quality of life. So when people start talking about protecting the environment as if it involves a change in your lifestyle, um, and they're talking about it like it's a bad thing, I want you to question that. Because I think there are numerous ways in which it can involve a change in lifestyle that actually benefits you. It makes you happier, it makes you healthier. That's largely been my experience. And I think that if we start thinking about environmental issues and sustainability like that, we will be much more motivated to protect the environment. Because I don't know about you, but I just, when I think about things that are win-win situations, that's what I want to put my energy into. Like, I get really excited when I see a win-win situation. And there are tons of win-win situations when it comes to protecting the environment. Yeah, that's what I have to say. Thank you.